Hello, hello, Math 8 students. This is Mrs. Yowd. Today I'm going to teach you Chapter 6, Lesson 3, which is about linear functions. Please have out your spiral notebook and open to a nice clean page and write this at the title. You will also need your RPJs. First of all, let's define a linear function. A linear function is a function with that when you graph it, it is a line and it's a non-vertical line. A linear function can be written in the form as y equals mx plus b. We've seen that a lot. Remember, m is your slope, and b is your y-intercept. If you looked at the xy table of a linear function, you would find that the y numbers either add or subtract the same number each time. That helps you know that it's a linear function. Something else I wanted to point out to you is that if you look at the word linear, it has the word line built into it. So when you see the word line, you know that it's going to be a line. It's going to be in the form y equals mx plus b, which is also a line. And the numbers add or subtract each time. And that tells you that it has a constant slope that never changes. Please pause the video for a moment and make sure that you're all caught up with your writing. Let's take a look at this first example. Please pause the video and draw yourself a graph that has these points and the directions. Okay, so let's take a look at this. If we want to write a linear function, remember a linear function is written as y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope and b is your y-intercept. So what we need to do is find is first find our slope. Now since it's drawn on a line for us or drawn on a graph, if we took a look at this graph, if I connected the points, you would see that they form a line. That means that we can count on the graph what our slope is. So I'm going to count up two, sorry, up three over two, and I'm going to notice that it's up three over two again, up three over two again. So you'll notice every time it goes up one, two, three, over two, one, two, three, over two. And so that means, and it's also going in the positive direction. So that means that my slope is up three over two. The second thing we need to do is find the y-intercept. The y-intercept, remember, is where does the line intercept the y-axis? This is my y-axis here. So if we look at the y-axis, we see that it crosses the y-axis at that point, which is at negative three. So negative three is my y-intercept. Now we're ready to write our answer. We have y equals, the, remember, the slope x comes first. So my slope is 3 over 2. Don't forget the x. Now we write our y-intercept, which is minus 3. So I'm going to put minus 3. That is the answer for a linear function for this graph. Please pause the video for a moment and write down the second example. Okay, so what we need to do is use the table to write a linear function that relates y to x. Remember, a linear function is written as y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope and b is your y-intercept. This time, we don't have a graph to count our slope. So what that means is that we need to use our slope formula. So remember the slope formula is a fraction sign with two minus signs on the top and the bottom. You'll notice that I have four different points here. And what you need to do is choose any two points. I have negative three comma nine, negative two comma seven, negative one comma five, and zero comma three. Any two of those four points will work. For the sake of this lesson, I will use these two points here. So I'm going to use negative one comma five and zero comma three. It helps me if I write it in a form that I'm used to seeing. 
Remember that the top of your slope formula are your y numbers. So on the top, we're going to use 5 and 3. So I will put 5 and 3 here. On the bottom, we're going to use our x numbers. So on the bottom, I'm going to put negative 1 and 0. Now what we just need to do is simplify this problem. So 5 minus 3 on the top is 2. On the bottom, we have negative 1 minus 0, which is negative 1. And that simplifies just to negative 2. So now we need to find our y-intercept. Our y-intercept is a point that has 0 as its x. Because any time I graph a point with 0 as an x, I'm going to end up on the y-axis. So if you look at your four points up here, notice that 0 as an x is here. That means that this is my y-intercept. So 0, 3 is my y-intercept. That means my y-intercept is positive 3. So now we need to write our answer. y equals mx plus b. So y equals, remember my mx comes first, my slope x. My slope is negative 2. So I'm going to write negative 2x. Now I need to write the y-intercept. My y-intercept is positive 3, so I will put plus 3. And that is the answer of the function for this xy table. Please open up your RPJs and turn to page 132. For problems 1 through 4, we need to write a linear function that relates y to x. Remember our linear function is y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope and b is your y-intercept. So if we take a look at number one, we have a graph. Now you have to be a little bit careful here because this graph is tricky. Notice that the y-intercept is counting by twos, two, four, six, eight, ten, but the x-intercept is only counting by ones, one, two, three, four. So that means that when we count our slope, we have to be a little bit careful. So if I count from one point to the other, remember I'm counting on the y-axis, I'm counting by twos. So instead of what this looks like is up one and a half and over one. We're counting by twos, so it's up one, two, three, and over one, right? Let's take a look at that again. Up one, two, three, and over one. And the reason why, again, is we're counting by twos here, and we're only counting by ones here. So if we go up three and over one, so that means our slope is positive 3 over 1, which simplifies to just 3. Now we need to find our y-intercept. Our y-intercept is where does this, where do these points cross the y-axis? And as you can see on the graph, the y-intercept is here at 0. So I'm going to write that my y-intercept is at 0. Okay, so now we just need to write our answer. y equals and we always want to write our slope x first, so that would be 3x. Now, my y-intercept is 0, so I could put plus 0 here, but I don't need to. I can just leave it as y equals 3x. It's a little bit cleaner. Let's take a look at number 2. y equals mx plus b, so we need to find our slope, and we need to find our y-intercept. So what I notice is that I cannot draw a triangle connecting these points, which means that it, the slope is either going to be zero or undefined. Remember slope dude, he's having zero fun if he's doing this. So that means that this has a slope of zero. The y-intercept is where does the line cross the y-axis? And I notice that my y-intercept is up here at positive two. So now I'm ready to write my answer y equals my slope comes first, and then plus 2. Generally, when you have a slope of 0, like that is, we're just going to simplify this to just plain old y equals 2. And that's the answer for number 2. Let's take a look at number 3. This time we're given a table. And remember, in our last problem, we had 
Lots of, pro lots of points that you can choose from. Last time I chose the last two points. This time I'm going to choose the first two points. I want to rewrite it in a way that I'm used to seeing. So I'm going to rewrite it as 0, 5 and 1, 7. So let's find the slope. Write your uh, formula like that. We need to put our y numbers on the top. So that's 5 and 7. Our x numbers go on the bottom, 0 and 1. Let's simplify this. 5 minus 7 is negative 2. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. There's a double negative there, which means it should be positive 2 then. Now let's find our y-intercept. Remember, the y-intercept is always found where 0 is your x. So if you look at all of these points, 0 as an x is here, which means that that number is my y-intercept. So 0, 5 is my y-intercept. So my y-intercept is 5. Let's go ahead and write our answer. y equals slope, don't forget your x, plus y-intercept. So that's the answer for number 3. I would like for you to pause the video, please. Go ahead and try number 4 on your own. For number 4, I got y equal to negative 1 half x minus 2. For my slope, I chose to use these two middle points this time. So as you're checking your work, if you chose a different set of points, you may have different work here, but you should have gotten the same answer for the slope. Let's take a look at number five. The table shows the distance traveled y in miles after x hours. So here we have a table. So after zero hours, they have traveled zero miles. And after two hours, they have traveled 120 miles. After three hours, sorry, after four hours, it's 240 miles. And after six hours, it's 360 miles. So the first step is to write a linear function that relates y to x. Remember, that means that we're going to be writing y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope and b is your y-intercept. Since we don't have a graph yet, we need to use our slope formula. So let's use our slope formula to find out what our function is going to be. I'm going to go ahead and use uh, the first two points, 0, 0, and I took that from here, and 2, 120 and I took that from the second group. So now we need to put our y numbers on top. So 0, 120, or sorry, 0 and 120, and our x numbers go on the bottom, 0 and 2. So when we simplify this, we get negative 120 over negative 2, and this simplifies to positive 60. Now let's find our y-intercept. So our y-intercept is taken from when x is equal to 0. So this point here, 0, 0, is my y-intercept. So that means that my y-intercept is 0. So my function is going to be y equals mx plus b, so 60x. Now, since my y-intercept is 0, we don't need to write that. So y equals 60x. On Big Ideas Math, there's going to be a pro this problem that you're going to do is also going to ask you what the independent variable is and what the dependent variable is. So I would like to do that with you as well. The independent variable is always your x number. So x, and in this case, x has to do with hours. So x hours is my independent variable. My dependent variable is always your y number. So in this case, my y number has to do with miles. So I'm going to write y miles. Something else that the book is going to ask you to do is to interpret the slope. So what does 60 mean? Well, remember, 60 is how many miles, right? That's my, my y goes on top over my x. This has to do with miles, this has to do with hours. So when we simplify it, it, 60 means 60 miles per hour. That is what my slope means. 
Okay, let's go ahead and graph it. Now you'll notice that we have um, very, very big numbers here on my y-axis. So that means on my y-axis, I need to count by something that's not ones. I'm gonna go ahead and count by 60s since that's what my slope is. So that'll make it a little bit easier. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish writing this in. So we have 240 and then 300, 360, 420, and lastly we have 480. And that'll be my miles. Now my X numbers has to do with hours, and I'm just going to leave it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. That has to do with hours. Okay, let's go ahead and graph. So my first point is 0, comma 0. So my that point goes here. My second point is 2, comma 120. So 2, 120 will be here. My next point is 4, comma 240. So that would be here. And lastly, we have 6, comma 360, which is here. So there we have our graph. The last question asks us, what is the distance traveled after three hours? So if I look at my hours, here is three. I can use my graph to help me because notice that I can continue this line here. So what I can do is I can find my three hours and look up and then over and see the answer is 180. So the distance traveled after three hours is 180 miles. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.